Hi, I'm Ingrid, and I'm here with Adam Tierney, author of Afraid of Everything. Hi, Adam. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's great to visit you, and obviously I'm coming from my haunted house where I do all my writing, and I'm excited to talk about the book. So Afraid of Everything is a really good book for uh, young readers that like horror stories, and I had a chance to look through it, and it's got a lot of really cool stories that are easy to share. And um, I wanted to let you know that I'm actually looking forward to reading some of those stories to some of my friends' kids over Zoom for like a story time hour. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's good and bite-sized. And that was kind of one of the main things that I wanted to do with it was, as you go through the book, um, every page that you flip to has exactly one illustration and one story. So what you see, the words, that's the story start to finish. So they only take about, you know, three to five minutes each. So perfect for bite-sized reading, perfect for readers who are, you know, learning and, and getting better at, at their reading capabilities. But yeah, we really wanted something where, you know, they were all just very self-contained stories and you could flip to any one of them and then just get this huge quantity of these spooky stories rather than, you know, stories that might overstay their welcome or go on to a little bit too long. Yeah, they're perfectly bite-sized, just like you said. And um, I actually really like the creepy illustrations that go with each of them, because it kind of seems like you can sink into them as you're reading. We had Matthew Cousin as the illustrator for most of the stories, and he did a really good job. I've been a fan of his for a number of years. And so there's 26 main stories. It's A to Z themed. And so he did all the art for those. And then we have a couple of guest illustrators doing the uh, images for the later stories, the bonus stories. But yeah, I really love Matthew's art because it has this perfect balance between very creepy and kind of genuinely unsettling but at the same time kind of cartoony and kind of lighthearted. so it was really fun to have him contribute to the book and the way we would actually do it is I would uh, come up with the basic story he would do a drawing and then I wouldn't write the final drawing until I saw his art so a lot of the inspiration for exactly what happens in each of these creepy stories comes from me being able to look at the art we wanted to kind of not do an illustration where it's just what's going on in the story. So they're all more about the characters. So kind of as you're reading the story, it's almost kind of what they look like afterwards, like floating in limbo. They look kind of zombie-ish. They look kind of, you know, a lot of them are undead looking. We want it to be kind of creepy. So rather than just an illustration that's just like, oh, that's what I'm reading anyways, or anything that would give away the plot, it's more kind of just giving a tone of the character, which we thought was cool. What exactly prompted you to write the book, though, when you started? So I've been working in entertainment for a long time, but it's always digital. I do video games, I've done TV, and I've always wanted to write a book. So this is actually the first book I've ever written. And I just, I love horror. My son loves horror, especially when I first started writing this. And so it was really just about, you know, the two of us wanting to do something that kind of matched our interests. And then it was also being inspired by Matthew's art. When I saw his art and the stuff that he was illustrating online, it just immediately kind of popped the book into my head. And I thought, oh, this would be perfect. I, I already knew the title. I already knew what I wanted it to, to be. And then, uh, we, yeah, we put together the book originally on, on Kickstarter and then later hooked up with, with you guys, IDW, for the full publication. But yeah, it was really just kind of like the stuff that I like, the stuff that my son likes. And then once we dove into the book and we did the full thing, it was trying to pick fears that were really unique from one another and had like a good... Um, you know, uh, broad collection. So making sure that we're not just picking the same kind of, you know, all physical stuff or all emotional stuff. It's really just all over the place so that, you know, we wanted something that would appeal to boys and girls, to appeal to younger and older readers. Basically anybody who loves spooky uh, stories and loves reading um, could really enjoy this. Yeah, I definitely got that wide range of fears that you covered because some of them were really surprising. I, I didn't even know that there were certain fears that existed what, as I nope. was looking through. We actually had to we had to make up some of them actually because uh, what I learned when I started working on the full book is phobias come from Latin and Latin does not have all twenty six letters so a few of the letters had the A to Z had no fears so I think like yuckaphobia like you know fear of yucky stuff quietophobia fear of silence we had to kind of fudge it a little bit on three or four of them just because there wasn't an actual phobia that that existed for that letter but for most of them we were able, we were able to use that okay ones. yeah <laughs> yeah i was gonna ask you about yuckaphobia exactly i was like wait a second 
as soon as people look at the cover of the book, there's a lot of different fears listed right at the top. And it says stuff like fear poison, spiders, death, germs, all kinds of stuff. But out of all the fears out there, I was wondering uh, which fears instantly made the cut for the book? Like what did you absolutely have to include? I think, um, so we started by doing a couple sample stories, myself and Matthew. And so I think we went with the standard. So the very first one was arachnophobia. I think almost everybody in the world is afraid of spiders to some degree. So we did that one. We did uh, fear of frogs just because it seemed funny and goofy. We did fear of skeletons because it's like a good go-to and it's a really nice visual. And then, you know, from the beginning, we also did some of them like fear of books or fear of shadows because I wanted to, again, not make all of them just creepy crawlers. We wanted to have a really good mix of themes. So those were some of the first ones. Started with some of the creepy crawlers, but then also got a little bit into you know, the emotional themes or things like fear of school or public speaking. We tried to, again, go back to what little kids and people that would be reading the book would actually uh, relate to. We didn't want to, you know, do fear of taxes or fear of, you know, income or, you know, job security or stuff. That's not really relatable for a kid for, uh, you know, book for kids. Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, go back to the fear of public speaking. Um, I always heard that public speaking was the number one fear for most people but i wanted to ask you since you researched this book thoroughly and you were writing all kinds of different fears and even making some up for kids to learn about um what fear do you think is the one that keeps the most people up at night like which one is the most popular for everybody well, surprisingly, yeah, I think a lot of people, myself included, very much relate to fear of public speaking. And so that's something that, you know, I've gotten better over time, but when I was a kid, I was just terrified by it. Um, that was definitely one, but surprisingly, so when we did the Kickstarter, we let some of the people who supported it contribute their fears. And it actually got tricky because almost all of them asked for some sort of version of loneliness or being alone or being left out. So there were so many of those people, we actually had to kind of rearrange the stories a little bit and say, uh, well, how about if we make this fear of, you know, being left behind and fear of you being fear of loneliness? Because that for, for the people we were talking to when we were initially putting the book together, that was far and away that the most common fear that they were, they were giving us was fear of loneliness or, or being left behind. So you've already told us uh, that a fear of spiders, fear of frogs, those immediately made the cut of the book. What about the fears that were really off the wall? Can you tell us at least one or two of them? Uh, so, so I'll tell you what, of all the stories, and I think there's, there's 37 stories in the book, there's uh, 26 of the A to Z and there's 11 bonus ones. The one that almost unanimously everybody tells us that they like the most is, I, I forget the word, it's something like iranophobia, but it's it's fear of heaven. And so we just had this really weird little story of this boy and he basically dies and, and goes to heaven and he starts testing the rules of heaven in, in a way that I think like a 10 to 12 year old boy would. He's like, well, do I get this? And how about you make this appear? And can I do this? And it's just sort of, it's one of the funnier stories um, and it's him exploring what he, he can do and what he can't do and what are the rules. And then of course there's kind of a creepy twist ending at the very end of it. That was one of the ones that I think was definitely one of the weirdest ones, um, but also really seemed to resonate with uh, the most with, uh, with a lot of people that read it. So this is my last question. What is your favorite page in the book? And uh, which image do you think you're never gonna get out of your head? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I. Probably my favorite is probably still the very first one Matthew illustrated, which is the arachnophobia girl. Yeah. Um, that was sort of our test in terms of how are these illustrations gonna look? What's the style? How creepy are they? And I just, I love the girl that he drew and I love, she's just got spiders all over her. In fact, she has like a spider over her eye and it kind of looks like an eye. And so I think that one, you know, there's a lot of good art in there, but that was just one of the absolute best ones. 
Um, and then what was really cool too was Matthew did the main stories, but we had a lot of really talented guest artists. So some of the people we have kids would actually know about. For example, one of the stories is illustrated by Temi Chang, who was an animator on Undertale, and everybody loves Undertale. Another one was Kotaku Uchi. He's the guy behind the WarioWare series and the Wario games. So again, I come from the video game world, so we were kind of able to get a lot of friends from there, but it was really cool in the bonus section, especially to see all the different styles because Matthew is that perfect blend of cartoony and, and creepy, but some of the guest artists were really creepy or really cartoony and just kind of all over the place. So it's really, really interesting to see those. So definitely, I love all the bonus illustrations, but yeah, if I had to pick absolutely just one, it's probably the very first one, the arachnophobia picture. I would definitely agree with you on that one. It still gives me a little bit of that creepy crawly feel. Thank you. Yeah, it was really fun to work with. And this is my first book ever. I've done a lot of video games. I've done cartoons this is my first book ever. And I'm so happy to get it done. So happy that IDW is publishing it. And I, I can't wait for people to be able to pick it up and check it out. Afraid of Everything is out in stores. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching.